Hello everyone, I am Ramiro, also known as Skin Cube, and welcome to the director's commentary of Skin Cube Cut. It's been a long, long time since I've done longer form comics, but recently I've actually been doing some new comics here and there in my spare time, secretly. Uh, but before I finish any of those, I thought that it might be some fun to revisit some of my older stuff and share them with um, the newer audience that I've since uh, accumulated over the past couple of years. So that's all of you. Um, Skin Cube Cut was not my first comic. It's actually my second. My first comic was a short comic I did called Family. It was about two brothers and their mother, who is like some kind of weird octopus monster that lives in a well. And um, yeah, that was my first one. Did that long ago. Uh, and growing up, I was really into horror comics, EC comics especially. They used to do Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror uh, back in the 50s. And in the 90s, they reprinted these, and I became a huge fan when I was a kid. As I got older, though... I got really into horror manga, and so those two things were kind of this ball of inspiration for me, and at the time that I did Family, my first comic, I was actually in my second year of college, and I had met a lot of friends online who were just starting to make their own zines and their own comics and their own little things that they would sell at cons and stuff, and I kind of envied them because... Uh, well, number one, they were extremely talented, you know, and they were making all their own cool stuff to sell. And meanwhile, I was stuck in, in school, like not really uh, knowing or understanding what I wanted to do with my own work. But um, I kind of saw all that happening around me, and I would look to them for inspiration. And at one point, I said to myself, you know, I'm pretty good at art. I love horror comics. Let's see if we can compete. So one month, I ditched a bunch of classes, and in the break room at school, I would sit down and I drew what ended up being Family, my first comic. Eventually, though, I dropped out of school, and yeah, that was it, And but I kept making weird stuff, and that's what I've been doing since. Uh, Skin Cube Cut um, was done sometime in 2005. And at the time, I was just on fire with ideas, and I was just drawing nonstop. Uh, because after finishing uh, Family, um, it got me so much attention, and I just wanted to keep doing more, telling more stories. So luckily, when I first did Skin Cube, I was already inspired by so many things at once, which I'll tell you about in a bit. So when it came time to do the second comic, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So with that out of the way, let's get into the comic. Everyone, this is Skin Cube number one, cut. Okay, so please bear with me because I am recording this off the top of my head. I'm not using a script for these parts. Um, so here's the title page. And I like to do title pages usually when I'm finished with the whole comic. Because, you know, once you're finished, I once I'm finished, I get a better sense of what the comic is about or what the main focus was because I don't really think about things when I'm uh, uh, when I'm writing a comic or when I'm storyboarding I just kind of let things take their course um, but title pages they always come at the end usually sometimes I have a great idea for an image and I just sometimes just make a comic out of one image but yeah the title page for this came out uh, came about towards the end I think. I'm not sure. I do have a sketch that I'll show you later on of this uh, title page. It looked uh, fairly different originally, but here we got a giant butcher knife cutting into the skin cube, and the skin cube's just kind of floating in, an, in a void in space. Uh, this image, just like the, the layout of it, is heavily inspired by Sohiro Maro. He's uh, an Eroguro manga artist that I'm a big fan of. He does these really strange and surreal comics, usually very violent and sexual. But uh, I wanted to kind of capture that same feel of like this strange kind of void 
thing going on. Yeah. <laughs> Again, no script. Sorry. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. And here we got page one and two. And uh, on page one, we're inside an apartment building and we're looking into this peephole. So it's got kind of a, of a weird blue velvet kind of vibe where we're already looking into some other dimension or something. Uh, apartments come up a lot and stuff I come up with. I'm not sure why I grew up in, a par- in an apartment. I grew up in an apartment. Um, I'm not sure why I find them so interesting. I just do. Just something about like a weird building with a closed space. I don't know. But anyway, the next page, we see that someone has just moved into this apartment. And we've got a dude here picking up a little skin cube that he just found in a box. It is chosen him and his place and he's like what all right uh three and four he calls over this girl and i never really came up with a backstory for this couple i'm not really sure uh who they're supposed to be other than a couple that's kind of just like what i what i thought of right away as i was improvising this whole comic but uh, he shows her this thing, and she says, it feels like real skin. And that's a line that kind of pops up in, in uh, Skin Cube 2 as well. It was, it was kind of supposed to be a recurring line all in the Skin Cube stories. Uh, the next page, um, where they're sitting on the couch, uh, the panel before it, that actually comes up again in Skin Cube 2 as well. Like, I wanted this later thing to be like, uh, like literally the word later and then the rectangular blank panel. I wanted that to show up again in all the other Skin Cube comics, kind of like as a callback to this first one. And it does show up in Skin Cube too. And so they're sitting on the couch, and she's got a strange feeling about this uh, odd uh, void. I mean, odd uh, Skin Cube. Okay, and uh, they start getting a little amorous here in this page. And then in the next page, they uh, they um, uh, make love. They fuck. <laughs> That's what happens. Uh, I hope I don't get a strike for that or anything. But um, uh, so they're having sex, and you know, there's it's kind of like this weird. This whole sex scene is actually inspired from like uh, David Cronenberg's films. Um, he always did like strange. A lot of his films have kind of odd sexual scenes with like flesh and everything feels weird just watching it. So that's kind of where that comes from. And as she's uh, having sex with him, she experiences a strange thing in her mind where all she can think about is a skin cube. Okay, so before I go on any further, I thought it might be... Um, fun to talk about uh, the origins of the story. Um, I don't live in a vacuum. I don't just get ideas, you know, that'd be awesome, but I don't. I don't think anyone does. I usually have to get inspired or ruminate on a concept before I decide to make something out of it. Uh, And one of my biggest inspirations, more than comics, more than art, more than, well, more than anything really, is film. I watch a lot of movies, and I have a lot of favorite filmmakers. One of my favorite artists of all time ever is David Lynch. I know now it's like almost trendy to say you like David Lynch, but I liked him before he was cool. Well, he's always been cool. I mean, I mean, look at him. He's got a cigarette there. He's like, who gives a shit, you know? (laughs) But um, I've been a huge fan of his since I first saw Lost Highway back when I was a teen. Um, and shortly before I did Skin Cube, I watched his film, um, Mulholland Drive. It's considered one of his best films, and there's a lot of great stuff in that movie, but the part that really, like, stuck into my brain when I first saw it, uh, it was not the creepy bum behind the Winkies, it was this scene here, uh, on the, uh, right there, uh, there's that part near the end where the two women find this weird spooky ominous blue box and just that whole scene 
is really freaking eerie to me. I can't really explain why other than I kind of, you kind of almost relate to it on some kind of weird dream unconscious level. Like you, you feel it, you know it like, Oh, this is weird. I, I know this feeling, <laughs> but it wasn't the visual. People think it's like, Oh, it's because it's a cube. That's why you were inspired. It's like, no, no, it wasn't the visual that stuck with me. It was more the feeling that I got from it. And I wanted to see if I could replicate that mood, just that feeling that I felt with pictures, you know, with a comic. I wanted to see if I could, like, make the, the reader feel like they were dreaming just from reading a comic. Uh, another big source of inspiration is the manga Uzumaki by Junji Ito. And... You know, we all know who Jujutsu Ito is now. I'm not even going to, like, explain it. The guy's a big name now. At the time when I made this, though, uh, he wasn't very popular here in the U.S., and it's nice to see him uh, being so famous now and adored by uh, weirdos and even normies. Like, it's it's amazing to see that he got so big you know, over the recent years. I think it's great. Um, but I had read Uzumaki, and I just love the idea... The idea, again, the feeling of becoming obsessed with something as as boring and mundane as as a shape or an object and it driving people mad. I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. And originally, the skin cube wasn't a skin cube. I had written it in the notes to be like just this strange fossil-like thing that they find. But at the last minute, I thought, skin cube. I'm not sure why, <laughs> again, it just kind of came about organically, like, um, it just, it just happened. But, you know, you'll notice that I'm kind of repeating myself a lot here because a lot of what I try to do when I make comics or tell a story is me trying to create a, a mood. I'm trying to create a feeling. Not like I want to express a message or a statement. Like, I, I literally want uh, to convey a specific feeling. I want the audience to actually feel uh, a feeling that I intend them to feel. I don't like making art with statements or messages or any forced symbolism. I think that consciously trying to insert things like that is, is, is kind of hacky. Uh, like, I just can't stand that. People, like, focus... A lot of artists usually focus so much on, like, oh, I want... The meaning of this is this. Like, I'm making a statement here. It's like, you know... I, I don't like that. I My goal is usually just to entertain. Like, that's it. I think too many artists are focused on... On messages and statements that they don't really... Remember what's important. Is like, you know, you're you're making a visual. You should make it interesting to look at entertain them entertain people and um but yeah i don't like i don't like uh, forcing meaning into things i always just stick to what feels right even if it just kind of comes across as very weird um you know i i'm trying to make a, a mood or an atmosphere uh, for me it's important that that people really uh feel something that they get some kind of odd reaction from the experience even if even if it's not what i intended even if i intended people to feel like weirded out or you know in this case in skin cube where i intended them to feel like they were dreaming uh even if they just didn't get that even if they just found it amusing or funny or they got something completely different out of it then i'm satisfied because you know i was able to to get them to get a rise out of them uh so that being said, uh, the feel, again, that I wanted for Skin Cube was I wanted the audience to feel like they themselves were actually dreaming that this is their nightmare. Okay, so moving back into the story here. Um, so she wakes up after uh, their, their little romp, but he's still asleep. So she gets up and and heads straight towards the skin cube. 
And in the kitchen, she opens a drawer and takes out a knife and begins to cut into it. That knife, by the way, is is totally real. <laughs> uh, we, my mom, had a knife uh, in the kitchen just like it. And when it came time to draw a knife, I needed reference. And this was when I was stupid, when uh, I didn't just go to the internet for everything. Because back when I was in school, I went to an art school. Uh, the professors were freaking assholes, and they were like, "No, nah, you can't use reference from the internet." This was back when the internet wasn't as, as a common thing now. I get well, it was common, but it wasn't like this thing people relied on. But if they found out you were using reference online, like they would blow their top. Uh, I remember one time they made us go to an airport to draw airplanes, and we were just like, "Why can't we just look up photos of airplanes?" <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I fucking hated school. That was one of the one of the reasons I hated it. I mean, it's important to draw from life, I know. But, you know, sometimes sometimes you can just look at a knife. Anyway, so <laughs> back to this So I ran to the kitchen and I grabbed this knife. And then I ran with it back to my room and I remember my mom going, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and then later on uh, everyone else in, in my family, uh, and I mean everyone, all my relatives read this comic. I think it was my sister who showed it to them or something. I don't know. But they were all making fun of me uh, for the for the knife being in it. <laughs> so I guess I did a good job reproducing it because they all instantly recognized it. And they all liked the comic too, which was, which was nice. You know, it was nice. All right, so... So now she's slicing into the skin cube like a big piece of cake or something, and a nice chunk of it just slides off. And she's like, blood? And uh, she slowly inserts a finger into the guts of this thing and pulls an intestine right out. Uh, so in regards to that last page where she's putting the finger in, uh, this is actually a reference to... Uh, the Caravaggio painting, I forget what it's called, I think something of St. Thomas, where, you know, St. Doubting Thomas is putting his fingers in, in the wounds of Christ, and, uh, you know, to see that they're real, because he wouldn't believe them. Uh, uh, it's an image that I know another filmmaker that I really like, uh, David Cronenberg, I mentioned him earlier, uh, uses a lot in his own films, he uses a lot of, like, religious paintings as inspiration and stuff. Um, specifically in Videodrome, where Max Wren is like putting his his arm into into his weird VHS flush slot in his abdomen. So yeah, you know she's putting her fingers in the cube's guts. She she's feeling the reality of the nightmare. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm full of shit. I know. <laughs> All right, so she pulls that intestine out and then. All the guts just spill out, and she hears a scream from the other room, and she goes running with the knife into the other room and is terrified by an, abs an absurd and grotesque revelation. She has killed her lover, or he died under supernatural means. We don't know. Um... Is this a dream? When she got up, is she dreaming? I'm really not sure. <laughs> it's just the way it came out of me. And that is the end of the story. But if you've actually read ahead, you know that that's not the end. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. That ended on quite a shock. You know, guts all over the place, what have you. Uh, shortly after I finished Skin Cube, I made a zine out of it. Um, but I was very unsatisfied with the first copy, which is on the left right there. Uh, later on, I think it was a year later, I reprinted it. Maybe a couple months, I can't remember. But I reprinted it, uh, and this time I included sketches, notes, uh, guest art from friends, and, and uh, a little preview of Skin Cube 2 was in it. And also, along with it, I included a deleted scene. 
this is actually uh, the deleted scene is not actually a deleted scene. I never even intended to add it. <laughs> I know. Uh, oh, this is cool. This is cool. On um, on the left is actually the earliest skin cube drawing that I could find. Uh, that's the cover sketch that I mentioned earlier. It looked a little different. It had the girl screaming on it and everything. Um, it was just me playing with like title page ideas. And on the right are some notes and ideas for skin cube and just skin cube stuff in general for the story. Uh, skin cube cut has a sequel, like I mentioned earlier. It's called Skin Cube 2. Um, and it was written uh, a little bit after I finished Cut. Uh, in writing the sequel, I came up with, like, these pages and pages of just, like, Skin Cube world lore that, you know, like, because even today, I like to say that all my comics are set in the same universe. And I think they are, because, you know, I, I conscious sometimes I, I, I try to add things that'll that'll become relevant again or, or a callback to something else. You know, but Skin Cube itself has a lot of its own, like, lore and stuff and history. And I had planned at least six Skin Cube stories. Um, but the, here's some shots of what I mean right here. Like, I even made, like, an alphabet uh, thing based on a Masonic cipher. And I would use, like, the little... I would use it to add little hidden messages which you can see in Skin Cube 2, and even in, in the Skin Cube Cut deleted scene that I'll show you. The X-Files was a TV show in the 90s. <laughs> no, but it it's always been a huge inspiration to me, the X-Files, and people are always like, oh, what's, like, what's something that inspires you? I'm like, oh, movies and the X-Files. <laughs> but... The X Files, believe it or not, was a big inspiration on the on the deleted scene, and the rest of the Skin Cube world lore. I've seen I've seen the X Files over and over again. Like I've watched it a lot of times from the beginning to the end. Even the even the like, the man new seasons like the you know they're kind of crappy, but I include them. Uh, one thing that I love about the X Files, and you know everyone's gonna groan about it, about about it to me, but I love the mythology episodes. I, f I freaking love them. Uh, it's where you get like a little glimpse of the main overarching plot of the show. You know, and the mythology episodes involved like this alien invasion and black oil and this government conspiracy and the soap opera that was Mulder's family history. I loved all that shit. So at the time when I was doing this, uh, this deleted scene and Skin Cube 2 and just the Skin Cube stuff in general, the X-Files was a big influence. And with deleted scene, I wanted to kind of recreate the tone of the mythology episodes, uh, the cliffhanger specifically. I wanted to like give you a small glimpse of where the rest of the Skin Cube stories would eventually lead us to. And here it is. Page one of the deleted scene. Uh... So it opens with, uh, we're at a psychiatric hospital owned by Tharp Medical, and um, our heroine has gone mad or has been imprisoned for killing her lover, and she's kind of just sitting in her cell, just stewing in her own juices. And then suddenly, this mysterious slot sigil transports us somewhere else, and there's these ominous hood figures just kind of holding a skin cube and at the bottom there that translates that's a masonic cipher that translates into end and yeah that's the deleted scene and that was skin cube number one cut so to this day <laughs> oh yeah it's a little that's a little thank you page that i included in the zine I like to do little cute things once in a while. It's fun. So, to this day, I, I get a lot of questions about uh, what the hell is going on in this story, or anything you do, really. <laughs> and as I mentioned, I, I don't think about it. I don't know. It's just something that I came up with. It's, it's not... Skin Cube Cut is not as methodically planned as Skin Cube 2 was. Uh, it's more of a stream of consciousness thing. 
So whatever meaning you project on it, I guess that's as true as any. I don't know. You know, but I always love hearing people's thoughts on it. So, you know, hey, if if you got if you think you know what's going on, I'd love to hear about it. Please, please, you know, let me know. All righty. And that's it. Uh, Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. This was real fun to do. And thanks to all of you who emailed me telling me to repost all this old work. Uh, It's been a real hoot looking at all this stuff again. And it even got me started on a few new comic-related projects that I just can't wait to start sharing with all of you. If you guys like this video and want me to make another one of these, just let me know. Uh, You know, and if you got some comics that you want to know more about, uh, name them and I'll think about making another commentary for them. Uh, Thanks to my patrons. You guys are seriously amazing. You're the best. You're awesome. You're great. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who else who helped me put this video together. Love all of you. And once more, I am Romero, also known as Skin Cube, recording live from beyond. <laughs>